بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله و passing this blessed month of Ramadan and today we'll just we'll cover this hadith عن أبي عبيدة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الصيام جنة مالا a Sahaba by the name of Abu Ubaidah reports that he mentions that I've heard the Rasulullah saying that fasting is a protective shield for a person. So fasting is a shield, it's a protective shield for a man as long as this person he does not tear up the the protection himself. As long as this person he doesn't break that shield himself. So a protective shield, what well, here means just like a person when they're in when they're in a battlefield, and they a, a man he uses a shield to protect himself from the strikes of the enemy. So similarly, fasting, what does it do? It protects a person from a very well known enemy, which is shaitan. So in other hadith, it's also mentioned that. Fasting, it saves a person from Allah Ta'ala's punishment and it saves one from from the fire of Jahannam in the hereafter. So fasting itself is a, is a form of protection and it's, it's a shield against shaitan. Now, what type of shield is it? What is it protecting us from? So like we mentioned, it's protecting us from the attacks of shaitan. But the hadith mentions that it's a protection... For oneself, as long as the person doesn't break it himself. So how does a person break that shield? So before we go into this, there's something that we just need to highlight. That there's there are certain types there's certain types of fasts. So one is the fast which where a person he physically he's fasting. But um when a first when a person physically fasts then the the farida the obligatory act is fulfilled. What the person does is they abstain from food, drink, and uh, marriage relations from sunrise till sunset. That is that is fasting. And there's another type of fast where a person they they avoid, you can say, sinning, and they avoid misusing their time, or they avoid. Uh, using their time inappropriately. So in that case, spiritually, if a person, they, for example, do something wrong, commit a sin, or anything along those lines, then from a spiritual aspect, it's like a person's broken their fast. So there's two aspects here. One is the, the physical uh, aspect, obviously, the when Allah Ta'ala commands us to fast, then it's the physical fast that we're meant to carry out, that's the that's the obligatory act. But the benefits of the fasting is is meant to acquire this spiritual benefit. So now in order to maintain and acquire this spiritual benefit, a person also has to keep up with the... Uh, uh, and a person has to keep up, keep the check on himself. Because the purpose of fasting, like Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ that, that fasting has been, been, been uh, prescribed... And it's been made for so that one acquires taqwa, one acquires piety. So now fasting is a fard act, and it's been described as a shield. Now, our Prophet ﷺ said that this shield is is protecting one as long as the person himself doesn't break it. So, how does a person break his shield? Number one, a person can break his his shield by misusing one's eyes. So first of all, that means that a person, they should keep the eyes away from from any prohibited matter. So that goes for looking at any sort of evil action or, or anywhere where evil is committed. That's something which should be avoided and that's, some, that's something which a person should take great care of. Like Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the, in the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضُنَا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظَ فُرُوجُهُنَّ uh, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in, and he's commanded the believers the male believers that they should lower their gazes 
and he's also Allah Ta'ala has also commanded the females that they should also lower their gazes, meaning men and women should men and men, women who are strange to each other, they should lower their gazes from each other. Even some ulama are going to the extent that even whilst fasting, a person should shouldn't look at their wife with desire. Why? For for the fear that the heart may erupt during fasting. So that's the advice there that a person shouldn't even look at one's own wife with desire whilst fasting, let alone another woman. And obviously it's not just restricted to that, but any sort of sin which is committed with the eyes. This is what's been highlighted here. So one way a person breaks this, this protective shield is by misusing one's eyes. So one should take great care and great precaution to protect one's eyes. Secondly, the second way where how a person breaks a shield is is with the tongue is by misusing one's tongue and how does a person misuse his tongue for example by lying unnecessary conversations you can say backbiting arguments swearing etc so on and so forth hence whilst fasting you know a person should should really try that almost to to avoid unnecessary talking and uh, unnecessary arguments so if, if a if a person does or is it always tempted to fall into some an argument then just say i'm fasting so in other words one shouldn't start an argument and if someone else starts it then a person should avoid taking it up and it's very common that since like backbiting and, and slandering others it's it's something which people people spend their time doing this is, this is how people pass their time and it's such a habit it's such a bad habit that people do it without realizing that Allah Ta'ala is very severe in regards to this and Allah Ta'ala has highlighted this so, that you know people they shouldn't back by each other and then Allah Ta'ala he makes a comparison that أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَيَّأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِحْتُمُ that Allah Ta'ala gives a comparison that backbiting is like eating the, the dead flesh of one's brother this is some it's eating someone else's flesh that's not, not something a person of, of a sane mind would do so why would a person go ahead and, and backbite if that's the, of the same effect so this is something that we're, we're, all, we're all guilty of and may Allah Ta'ala forgive us and, and save us from this evil and in fact, in the hadith, the Sahaba, they asked our Prophet وسلم, okay, what's, what's riba? Can you tell us what riba is? When, can you tell us what, can you explain what backbiting is? So our Prophet وسلم, he said that backbiting means to, to mention something about your brother behind his back and to mention such a thing which he would dislike. That is basically the simple definition of backbiting, to mention something which the other person would dislike you to mention about. That is backbiting. So then the Sahaba, they mentioned that, okay, how about, you know, if the thing that we're saying regarding him is true, then our Prophet, he, he still said that, no, that's still backbiting. Even if it's true, even what you're saying is true, it's backbiting, and if what you're saying is false, then that's a step further. That's, in fact, that's slandering him. That's... You know, accusing that's buhtan. That's that's even worse. And once our Prophet وسلم, he he passed by two graves, and he said that in in both of these graves, the a punishment is taking place. A punishment is being inflicted. So one of the, one of them is being punished because of backbiting, uh, and the other is being punished because of not taking precautions to. To stay clean whilst passing urine. So, once again, may Allah Taala keep us safe and keep us safe from this evil and gives us the hope to inshallah Taala avoid avoid this sin, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. So, like we mentioned, that fasting is a shield as long as a person doesn't break it. So, and how does a person break it? Number one, by misusing his eyes. Number two, by misusing his tongue. Now, the third thing. What's the third way? Or what's the third method of uh, uh, of breaking one's shield? So 
So thirdly, by misusing one's ears, this is also a means of, of breaking one's of breaking one's shield. So a person should be careful that their ears they're kept away from listening to anything which is undesirable. And it goes for for backbiting as well. That a person they might not be backbiting themselves, but it's been mentioned that in backbiting, both the backbiter and the one who listens they're equal. They're equal in that sin. So this is something to avoid as well. Uh, obviously, listening to one is backbiting by using the tongue, and the other is by listening to a person being backbited as well. Uh, so this is a. Obviously, the roots are the ears here. So three roots have been mentioned here. Eyes, ears and tongue. And this is the essence of taqwa. Once, whilst I was studying, in fact, um, there was this student from France. So he came to see Mufti Sab. So Mufti Sab, my teacher, Mufti Inatullah Sab, Dawan Barakatum. So this person, he came to see Mufti Sab. And usually what would happen um, very often, uh, whilst we were studying, because the, our madrasa... Um, uh, Islamic institution. It had a. Re it was quite flexible in the sense that um, if you weren't studying the the alim class program, the, then the the other program, meaning if a person just wanted to come and recite Quran or or spend a week or a month or something, then they they could do that. So there'll be many people that would come from other countries like France, Germany, uh, and um, from other. A reunion island as well you know there'll be many people that would come and they just you know spend a week then go you know spend a month read the quran and learn the quran and then go like that basically so there was a student from france uh who who came for a short period of time as well and uh we were eating and i remember that he asked mufti sub this question uh because a lot of the times mufti sub when he would teach um he would he would pay a lot of attention and, uh, and he would emphasize on on purifying the heart and purifying the soul. So this person, he asks that, oh, no, oh, Mufti Sub, you know, like, how does a person purify his heart and soul? How does a person, he used the word tazkiyah, how, how um, the word tazkiyah means to, to purify. So how can a person acquire tazkiyah, meaning how can a person uh, rectify himself and rectify his condition? Meaning how does a person become good, in other words? So Mufti Sub, he replied that, three things, so easy, and it's so comprehensive. Protect your eyes, protect your ears, <laughs> and protect your tongue. Meaning, <laughs> control your eyes, control your ears, and control your tongue. If you can do that, <laughs> if you can do those three, inshallah ta'ala, you, you, you've purified your heart, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> that's all it, that's so, con that is, that's the root of everything. And this is, this is what taqwa is. This is the essence of taqwa. And this is, what we try to acquire by fasting, that we try to acquire control and gain complete control over our eyes, that we know what we, how we're using our eyes, that we're not using it for evil, we're using it for good. And we try and gain control over our ears in a sense that we don't listen to nonsense and we don't listen to sin. And the main thing is that we get control over the tongue. The tongue. Our Prophet ﷺ has mentioned in the hadith, that if a person can guarantee me that uh, that he will uh, you know not misuse the the matter which is between the jaws and the matter which is between the legs meaning a person if they can guarantee that they can safeguard their tongue and they can safeguard their private parts a prophet وسلم, said that I can guarantee such a person Jannah definitely Allah Akbar. So the object of fasting, the objective of fasting is is to conquer our carnal passions and desires. And this can only be done when a person, inshallah ta'ala, they focus on protecting one's gazes, protecting one's eyes, protecting one's ears, and inshallah ta'ala, protecting one's tongue, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah ta'ala gives a tawfiq to inshallah ta'ala. Do that, inshallah ta'ala, where we make this fast such that it's a shield. And we we protect ourselves from the from the from the thrusts and from the attacks of sin, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala gives a topic to make the most of the month of Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah ta'ala accept all of our fasts, inshallah ta'ala.
Subhanallah bihamdi subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadwa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.